things at take over my life, take over my tongue, take over my reasoning, take over my intelligence. I jack it and speak through me in the name of Jesus. Father, that one word that your people will hear and transform their life, let it locate them. In the name of Jesus, open their eyes, open their hearts, open their ears. Let them see your world. Let them see your world in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. We give you all the praise and glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. If you are with me tonight, can you shout a big amen? amen. I say shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. All right, people of God. We'll be talking about power, praise, and all possibilities. But that's not my topic. But I'll just pick something from there tonight. I'll soon tell us what the topic of tonight is. Hallelujah. Do you know that life was never designed for you to be alone? Hello? Even when God created Adam and Eve, and it seems as if they are the only one in that garden. Do you know that the almighty God will come down in the cool of the evening and have fellowship with them? Follow me carefully tonight. One of the reasons why God will give us power is because he knows that you will be in a particular locality, in a particular place that you have to influence a particular life or a particular community. And that's the, that's the vision of Virtuous Christian Center, so to say. All in all to influence life. All in all to make us become God's pride. All in all to make us become people that God will ask Satan and say, Hey, have you seen that my son? That, that guy, have you seen him? And Satan will say, Ah, let me test him. But when Satan will test you, trust me, you will not fail. Ah, I told somebody, somebody will say amen. I say you will not fail. I say you will not fail. In the name of Jesus. Tonight, the Lord is blessing somebody here in the name of Jesus. People of God, I want you to know that we need the Holy Spirit more than ever before. Not because so that we can show that we are spirit-filled. Not because so that we can show that we have the, so, so many dimensions of the Holy Ghost. No. Bishop will say, what is the essence of your Holy Ghost? Of your speaking in tongues? When, you cannot, when that speaking in tongues cannot translate to paying your bills. What is the essence of your speaking in tongues and praying in the Holy Ghost and you say you are so anointed? When people are teaching you around that you are owing them. How do you want to give God praise and show that God actually has power in your life? And you are saying you are full of the Holy Ghost. When you are living a life that does not correspond to the God that you are serving. How do you want to preach to an unbeliever? That already has everything that life can give. And you are telling him, hey, all of these things is nonsense. Come and take my God. And he cannot see a dimension of a God that can give him that particular life that he has. How do you explain yourself that, ah, I have, I'm fooled with the power of the Holy Ghost. I am tongue speaking. I am doing this. I have read my Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Praise God. You have become boss in all of those things, but you can't impact life. Somebody cannot come and meet you and say, ah, I need money to buy drugs. And you cannot say, okay, take. Because see yourself, you are even in that person. Hello? This month, one of the things I believe God will do for us is to give us a power that will show forth the praise of God by making us assessing to assess the realms of all possibilities. What, listen to my words very carefully. I said this month, God is going to release his power. The reason is because that is power will grant you access to a realm. We call that realm the realm of possibilities. Thereby, when you assess that realm, you will be able to show forth the praise of God. When people see your life, they don't need to ask that is their God. They know that they are of what is going on in your life. 
So it is not just a conjunction of letter P. Power, praise, and possibilities. You know, somebody can take art. That man of God does not to conjure, conjure words. But really, it's a journey. It's a journey. The power of God will back you up. Grant you access to some realms and dimensions that you've never seen before. Break every barrier and every limitation. Break every embargo. Break everything that your forefathers have never entered. Shay, you know there are some families, the moment they want to clock 50, there is something that will want to block them from moving beyond 50. But when you can unnest the power of God, the power of God will grant you access, will make that thing possible. And when that is possible, they will ask you, who did this for you? Where you get that kind of power that can break this limitation? Then the praise of God can show forth. That's the reason why this month is your month. I say this month is your month. Because you are not just going to receive the power of God to show that you are powerful. To show that you can kill all the witches and wizards in your family. No, that's not the essence. The essence is that... By the time you show up, one of the ways by which they know that you are a carrier of the power of God is the dimensions you'll be operating in. Hello, people of God. The dimensions you'll be operating in. The dimension where you know things without necessarily being there. A dimension whereby you, you, you do things for people and they ask you, Who is that guy, where does he come from? People of God, I ask you a question. Which people did Daniel has before he can control the whole Babylon? Daniel literally took the government of Babylon into his pocket. <laughs> it got to a time, the king had a dream. The Bible says they were all confused. They call all the astrologers and the magicians. They call them together. Nobody, nobody could interpret the dream. But there is a man that is a carrier of the power of God that can assess a realm that no one of them can assess. This guy said, Oh king, just give me some time. Let me be back. And he went in and said, God, you are the God of all possibilities. Grant me access into the realms of dreams and interpretation of dreams. When this guy will come, he did, only, he did not only interpret the dreams. The dream. He even tell. He told the dream of the king to him. The king. The dream that you forgotten. This is the dream. This is the meaning. Hayaka We are in Nigeria today. That's collapsing. The government is doing this. The government is doing that. My question is. Where are Christians that carry the power of God? Where is Charles Jasper that can host the power of God? And God will grant me an access into the spirit realm. And I will say, and I will write a letter. I will write a letter that, ah, hey, Lagos State Government, by so so time this was this what's going to happen. Take it. Reluctantly, maybe they look at it. Who is this? And they just sent somebody to take it. And they took it. And at the end of the day, they discovered that the little letter I wrote actually save them some billions of dollars people of god they will look for me don't you believe that they will look for me. don't you believe that when i say any other thing the legal state government this is what the lord is saying don't think they will care. christians believers need to get to a point in our lives that the power of god that we carry is not just ourselves alone the power of god that we carry is for the nations the power of God that we carry is for the people. The power of God that we carry is to liberate people. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter, chapter 61, He said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He wasn't upon him to do anything of himself. If you read that scripture, it's to do things, to set the captives free, to heal the broken hearted. The power of God that you are going to possess is not for you. So tell your neighbor, it's not for you. And this month, Trust me, God is going to grant you that power. <laughs> I'm not saying it because I want to, I want to, you know, cajole you. I am saying it because the word of the Lord has gone forth through the through His servant, and the Bible 
says in Jeremiah, Kala Diba Shata, one verse 10. He says, he talks about the fact that they will pull down, that he has set us, he has appointed us to pull down nations. Can, can, we, can we go to that scripture? And at the end of the day, he told Jeremiah, he said, what did you see? Hey, Jeremiah said, I see an almond tree. And he said, you have seen well. And because you can see well, let me read that scripture to us. Look at what it says. It says, see, I have this day set over you the nations. This is a carrier of the power of God. This is a guy that God has ordained right from his father's, his mother's womb. He says, I have ordained you over the nations and over the kingdoms. To do what? To pull out. That is everything that is not in conformation with the glory of God in Lagos State. I can stand in gap and say, Father, this policy is from the devil. I uproot it. It says to root out, to put down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build, and to plant. That means I will not just only destroy, by the time I uproot those negativity in the land, I have the capacity to once that, 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 that the kingdom of God will approve. The Bible says he has given you and I the keys unto the kingdom of heaven that whatsoever you bound on earth. Another version says whatsoever you allow. Whatsoever you allow. Whatsoever you allow. Whatsoever you allow. That was the audacity that Elisha had. And he said by this time, the following day, the $840 will crash to $1. Imagine a prophet of God now coming out and saying, people of God, God spoke to me. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, the pounds that is going gradually into 900, you know, per, per, uh, nera, per, per pounds, we crash down to nera. And the people were, hey, you don't come. Hey, all these prophets. And they woke up the following, and, and the following morning came. And at the end of the day, dollar don't crash. Or pounds don't crash. Uh, see, my best is yet to come. My best is yet to evolve. I've not gotten into what I want to say. This is just the homogies that I have with Bishop. Or the understanding of what he was trying to communicate with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People of God, this brings me to a point to tell you. Now, please don't be selfish about your life. You are not the owner of your life, in quotes. Some people are depending on you. God has tied the destiny of some people to you. Imagine if Dangote, I'm deliberately using Dangote because sometimes we think that this spirituality of a thing or this, see, there are, I'm going to talk about. One of the ways by which we can assess the power of God. The Bible says every good gift comes from where? Comes from where? Comes from where? Comes from where? Above. Abi? Every it is say it is say some. Every. Let me bust your bubble. If someone I'm trust me, this 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 is a house of balance, and I'm going to balance it. And I want you to listen carefully to what I am saying. And I'm saying this by the spirit of God and by the spirit of the house. If someone goes out in court and assess a son or a daughter from Osho, Osho is not the owner of a child. Because every good gift can only come from above. A man of God told us the other day, he said, God is the father of all. But if want to, I, I mean, he's, he's the God of all. But if want to see God as a father, it has to be Jesus. So that means the way God as God, there are diverse ways to God as God. But there is only way, there is only one way to God as a father. So trust me, if they have gone through the wrong route to get their blessing, it is still this God that has given it to them. So if God can give it to unbelievers, how much more you, that you are a carrier of this power of God, how much more, that was the scripture, that was why Jesus was saying, 
if as a father, earthly father, you will ask for bread from your father, will he give you stone? He said, no. He said, how much more me? How much more? He said, can a sucking mother forget to feed his baby? He said, yes, he can forget. He said, but I, your God, I can never forget. So if God can be so much interested, if God so much love everybody, right from the foundation of the head, that's why the power of God is embedded. What provokes God to release his power is his love. I'm going to tell us tonight, um, this, is just, this is just introduction to this topic. Trust me, when God wants to release his power to some people, God has a plan. God is an investor. He's an investor. And that's why all of the things you are passing through right now, God is testing you. If I invest in this guy, will he be selfish? If I give this guy one billion, will he go and marry ten wives? It's just hundred thousand I've tested him. Carrying girlfriends to it. Just hundred thousand. How much more? If I decide to now bless him, if I decide to open the windows of heaven to him, God test you with a car. You didn't come to church again. You have closed your heaven. You have closed, you have shut it. God gave you a job. He said, pay, give me back your 10%. You can't. He said, ah, if I open the windows of heaven to this one, my church will starve. My man of God will starve. Bishop was telling us the other day, he said he has never crossed his mind, but somebody said, when is your church going to build him a house? You might feel it is not necessary. I'm going to show you ways. Thank you. Oh, let me run. One of the ways by which God releases his power is through covenant with his man, with, with, his, with his servant. I'm going to let, let me just run. Three ways. So, my, the title of my message tonight, hallelujah, hallelujah, is someone getting blessed. Is encountering the power of God. How to encounter the power of God. Because the, 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 the basis of we assessing the realms of possibilities and, and, and that realm giving us praise or showing us the praise of God. The Bible says in the book of Psalm, it says, Out of the mouth of babe and sucklings, it says, God has ordained strength. He went to the book of Matthew. He didn't say babes. He said, mouth of babes and sucklings, God has perfected praise. That is, even though you seems like you don't know, he, he compares us to babes and sucklings. Even though it seems as if you don't know what you are doing. He says, out of that life, God wants to show forth his praise. And he can only do that by giving you the power to assess some realms whereby all things become poss possible for you. Right now, just imagine those things that you think they are impossible. Maybe right now, you are someone that is thinking, ah, when will I build my own house in this Lagos? He, a land alone in this Lagos, if you really want to live in places that matters, maybe they will be talking, that's the land though, maybe 75 million or 120 million. There are some lands like that, sir, Abby. 120 million, 150 million. Ha! If I come buy land for 150 million, how much are going to go use? When do I want to save 1 million? People, there is a dimension of God's power that can propel you into that possibility. They call it the power to make wealth. They call it the power to make wealth. There are people that have encountered God. They never believed that God would do as much as God would do. A man called Solomon was just seated and he said, ah, this God is just too good. Let me just, let me just do something crazy for God. And he sat down and said, what has no man? What has, let me just think about what anybody has never done before. Okay, they've been killing rams, bullocks, and okay, uh, the last person that killed, maybe he killed 200. This time around, I'm going to kill 1,000. And this guy, imagine, a very good ram because the Bible says they were, they were good. They are good bulls. A 
very good one now will cost maybe 200, 250. Am I right? Apply that by 1,000. They gave it to God, put it, and burnt it. And burnt it. 50,000 times 1,000. Please, how much is that? That's like 250 million. Am I right? You million. So you carry 25 million come church. Eh? And say, Pastor! Ope mi koito Ojojuman And you give it to Pastor. And Pastor looked at this and said, yes. And that was all. And that was all. People will look at you. Are you mad? Is it that you don't have anything? Is it that there is no investment you can put this money in? <laughs> but they didn't know that you have invested in a principle. Let me quickly talk about the three things that gives you access to God. Number one, say encounter. <laughs> you know, on Sunday I was talking about this encounter. Well, I was talking about uh, encounters gives you one of the I mean one of the ways by which you get perpetual encounters is by intimacy. But this time around, I'm talking about encounter by the power of God. That is. God, you encounter God himself. Just the way Moses told God, he said, just allow me to see your glory. I just want to encounter you. I just want to see it. Just help me to see your glory. And he did. There are scripture that they receive the power of God just by encountering God. Hallelujah. So the first principle or the first level is by encountering God. We are talking about the supernatural power of God. Not, not, not the vision you saw about God, but God. This, is, this one is not that, it's not that you, uh, 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 you did anything. Actually, what you will have done in the place of encounter would be that maybe you've studied. Maybe you've fasted. You know, such, encounter, such encounters come through, through that one. That's the level. Whereby God revealed his power. I learned that um, this, this man, yes, man um, Babalola, yes, Apostle Babalola, that every year, without him doing 40 days dry. You don't understand. 40 days dry. I didn't say seven days. I've done, by the grace of God, I've done three days. Before I did three days. <laughs> I've done three days dry. I can't imagine. I remember the, the day I wanted to extend it to seven. Now five, I stop. <laughs> Somebody, a man, now decides that every year I was listening to Apostle Michael uh, Oropo. Oropo. He said he listened to one word and he decided that I'm going to encounter the power of God. And this man was fasting every day for five years six to six i didn't say i didn't say for one year i didn't say for six months it was fasting for five years five years so it, it has become a lifestyle Do you understand so but adventure this, this, these are the people that normally they eat around nine in the night Do you understand that kind of thing there is, it has become, you can't, there is nothing. There is no party, no one bed that, that will make them do anything. Because there was something he was pursuing. It was the power of God. That's the dimension. That's the what? Dimension. The second way by which you can assess the power of God is by laws and principles. What do I call it? Laws and principles. People of God. I like this one because to some extent it brings a balance to this Christianity that we are talking about. Our man of God is always of the opinion that this life that we are seeing, see, and I was saying it on your workers' meeting. I said we will be shocked at the people that we will see in heaven. All this thing that you think is the spirit coco, nowhere ink, nowhere trust this, nowhere this thing that they will see in heaven. You will be shocked kind of set of people that we will see in heaven. Because I believe our God is too loving and too generous. You know, some people have the thought that maybe you, on my way to my birth, 
friend's house, for example, as I was going, eh, because I was not in, in, in obedience to the Spirit of God, that was why the God permitted that accident to happen because I was on the wrong way to... God, please, how many people will God have... Especially Lagos to Potakot, Lagos to Abuja. How many people? How many people? So you think our God, our God, the God Almighty, that allowed Jesus between of you and I to shed his blood, ridiculed God, he ridiculed himself, brought himself so low to that level, just because you, you are now going to your boyfriend's house, he will not decide to kill you. And neither worshiper is going to their, into his boyfriend's house. God did not kill him. Either worshiper. You, that you are now his child, just because you make a mistake of going to his boyfriend's house, you think God is going to kill you because of that. You need to come to Virtuous Christian Center. And listen. My point, there are principles and there are laws that God has invested his power in. For example, if a thief, a thief, sleep with a man, eh? and he give back, it's the power of God that brought up that conflict. That's that thing. It's a thief. But there is a principle of reproduction that God Almighty has set in place. That if a man and a woman comes together, do you understand? And God, you know, I said it the other time that every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. So it will be an error for you to think because he is a thief, God will not give him a child. The power of God is expressed in principles. It's expressed in laws. In laws. He has created a system that with or without you being born again or not being born again, these principles will thrive. That's why the Muslims, the people that in quote are in our faith, they will sow seed. They will do Sarah. And you see God blessing them because they are operating the principles of giving. That principle does not answer to you, it will born again. It answers to the person that can sow and will reap. The power to make that wealth, the power to bring about when a woman is conceived, I mean, is, 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 is pregnant, nobody tells the, the seed inside him when the hand will come out, when the leg will come out, when the nose will grow, by the system that God has created, there is a right timing for those things. If there is an error in that design, we will say that that, that child is abnormal or that child is, 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 is has a deformity. Am I right? But in a place whereby the design of that system is, in a, I mean, is operational, we will have a perfect child. Nobody watch over the seed. Nobody knows what happened. As a matter of fact, it is foolishness that you will sow a seed, put it in the ground. The Bible says the seed will die before it grows. It's a principle backed up by the power of God. But the third dimension that I want to introduce us, us to tonight, <laughs> to assess the power of God, the third dimension, Amen? is that it can be activated by aligning with a man or a system that has covenant with God. The power of God can be gotten by partnering with a man, with someone that you know that this one has become a system. And it became a system because this one has a covenant, mark that word, covenant with God. I will give us some examples that will close. Abraham, Genesis chapter 13. Please, I would like you to open to that scripture for me. Genesis chapter 13. We all know the story. Abraham did not do, see, this, this particular people, the reason why God had a covenant was the midst. Hello? Please. Are you with me?
please, before we go to that Genesis, let's go to Psalm 50 and verse 5. Psalm 50 and verse 5. Psalm chapter 50 and verse 5. Men of covenant are men of sacrifice. Look at it. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that made a covenant with me by. So show me a man that wants a covenant with the Lord. I will show you a man that is ready to sacrifice anything. That's why the Bible says Abraham, it was counted to him as righteousness just because he obeyed and believe the voice of God. Right? God said, leave your father's house. Go into the land and I will show you. Because the man stood up, carry his wife, carry everybody, and say, we are going out. Where are we going? A land that God will show me. Are you foolish? Yes, I am. And they went like that. Just because of that sacrifice of going to a place that you don't have an idea about, and listening to a voice that you've never heard before in your life and you believe. God said, because of the price of obedience, I have counted it righteousness for you. Ha! Ah, just because I obey. Solomon, just because he did what nobody has done before, God said, hey, what do you want? The guy was asking, God said, no, I will make you the richest man in the world. Ha! Ah, sacrifice. Hey, any man that, go, that has made covenant with God by sacrifice, people of God, such men can, if you align with them, the power of God that God has given them can rub on you. Now, Genesis 13. Let me show us quickly. Genesis 13. Covenant is powerful. Though. Ah, this month, God will make a covenant with you. You, you don't understand. That's why you shouted that amen like that. I said this month, God will make a covenant with you. Amen. Can I have that scripture, please? Genesis 13 and verse 1. Verse 1 and 2, then we'll jump to verse 5. Are we ready? All right. People of God, follow me carefully. This is an Abraham. Look at it here. This is a man. It was Abraham here, not Abraham went out of Egypt he and his wife and all that he had and who? Lord. who? Lord. who? Lord. that guy is a sharp man somebody say sharp man a sharp man. Uh, sharp man he was able to recognize the man that has confidence over his life <laughs> the guy followed look at it though into the south verse 2 please verse 2 verse 2 and and Abraham was very in what? In what? And in what? Account. You know, Abraham, now in God call. Say, go out. God no call Lot. And Lot also went with Abraham. So the Bible recognized the fact that this guy, no be saying that God call him. He went with he followed Abraham. What now happened? He had flocks and herds and tents. By virtue of covenant, he was able to understand Abraham is a covenant man. Just by following him. That is what Jesus was saying. He said, Follow me, and I will make you. Now, don't, don't complete it. Don't say make you features of men. That is what those ones want to become. Because they were fishermen. That's why he said fishers of men. So, if I am an accountant, God might not make me a fisher. He said, I will make you put whatsoever you want God to make out of your life into that place. I will make you a billionaire. I will make you the richest real estate person in the world. I will make you. I see God making somebody here tonight in the name of Jesus. There is a making in the spirit. I decree by the mercies of God. The power of God will make somebody tonight. I said the power of God will make somebody tonight. Hallelujah. Let me wrap this up. Very People of God. This guy became rich. Just by association. Let me show us one more. Please. Genesis 
chapter 29. I want to believe I'm correct. Let me check, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mando Koposa. Okay, verse Genesis 30, verse 27 to 30. Hmm. You will see the account here. People that God has covenanted, eh? If you walk with them, not in the wrong church, people of God. You are in a church of a man that has sacrificed his life. A man that is working with Zenith Bank as a when was that self, sir? 2009, and he was collecting 300,000 as a 10. God called him. He left his job. Asked his wife to resign. Sat down to his work. And you think he has not made sacrifice? Him, sir? Yes, and he got a better offer. A man that was doing um, um, radio, whatever. Doing them radio versions of moments, they were in charity paying one million and a half per service, and he was re- living in a two bedroom apartment in one Shangisha area. And you see, that man has not sacrificed, and you say, God will not have a, a covenant with that kind of a man. You are lucky to follow that kind of a man. There are men of their life you can't see a track record of sacrifice in their life if you follow such men. You might not grip any blessing, any tangible blessing. Where is that scripture? Genesis 30, please, and verse 27. Time is not on our side. Look at this. Remember, when if you want to say the God of Abraham, what's the next thing you will say? Isaac and why not Esau? Esau was the first mother. Why did God pass uh, um, Bypass uh, so the, the guy is so what what he has to be to be the, that that is supposed to be associated to being a covenant child by virtue of that yeah, of God. If you time will not permit me, if you speak that scripture, the Bible says was faint. That is, he has no strength. Anytime you lose strength, be careful. Esau, this not because of anything, because this guy was weak in the spirit. He said the guy came, he was faint. He said, I beg, which one, which one be this? All this, all this bad right, all this bad right, all this covenant. I don't care. Give me porridge. Are there Christians today? And are selling their back right just because of their job. Come and serve God and make a sacrifice with God and make a covenant. You say, My job, my job, my job, my job, my job. You are exchanging your job for your back right. This thing comes in a subtle way. Genesis 30, please. Please let me learn this. We'll continue from here anytime we have the opportunity. Genesis 30. Are we there? And Laban said unto me, we all know this scripture very well. This one beautiful Akanchawa babe. He saw him. He saw her. He said, This is the one I want. I don't know what you see. People of God, be careful of what you say. If you read this scripture from the beginning, it was Jacob that by his mouth said, Let me serve for seven years. By his own mouth. Why did he think? Why, why, why can't he say, I want to serve for one year? Be careful in the place of anxiety, in the place of what you want to achieve, in the place of what you want to lay your hands on. Be careful for what you wish for. Why did he think, say, I want one year or six months? He said, Seven years. And in verse 27, after he sat for seven years, they gave him Leah. He said, No, not Leah, I want. Laban said, No, if you want Leah in our lineage, the elder must go first before the younger one. So you have to do another seven years. Now, if you study, the Bible says that Laban has already went to find out. He said, Why is God blessing me like this now? This the same, the same, the same way I feed this cattle, the same way I do this thing. Is it the same way? God 
God is now blessing me. And the divine had told him, he said, if you want this thing to continue, there is a guy, there is a covenant guy with you. Make sure he does not go. So when that guy saw the opportunity, he said, Rachel, you tell you what. And I said, and when this guy got Rachel, Rachel was barren. He was barren. He was looking for wife, looking for wife, look, I mean, looking for a child, brother. Looking for a child. But the moment he got the child, Joseph, the Bible says, Laban, I mean, um, what's it called? Jacob told Laban, he said, please, now let me go. Give me all that I have. Now, watch this. He said, and Laban, after asking, you know, and Laban said unto me, I pray thee, this was Laban, you know, begging, pray thee, if I have found favor in thy sight, in thy eyes, sorry, that is, don't go. You can see? He said, don't go. Please stay now. He said, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. God blessed Laban because there was a covenant child around. Verse 28, people of God. Verse 28. Can we go? Oh, my time is fast spent. And he said, this was Jacob now. Appoint me my wages and I will give it. I mean, this was Laban talking. Now verse 29. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee. This was Jacob talking. And how the cattle was with me. Verse 30. Verse 30, please. That's the last verse. And he said, For it was little which thou asked before I came. Can, can you see? Before you came, this thing was very little. Before I came, all of, the, all of your earnings was just 5,000. Before I came, you are not making much. He says, and it is now increased unto a multitude. It has run into millions. And the Lord has blessed this since my coming. Ever since I was around. The Lord has blessed me. And now, when shall I provide from my own house? You can see, by tapping into the convent, a covenant man like a man of God, the Lord can shape in your life. Access power. You can access power. Any kind of power. Power for healing, power for wealth. You can. Ah, tabala da bashta kati ya tabala bala bashta. Kasuko poli ya tapali ya da bashta. Rakande maliba kasusa tapali ya. Ale baka soko palia da bashta katia raga da bala da basa prakata palia ashti rakata pala bala bala bashta for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed please this is the last scripture pardon me please genesis let me just land this covenant thing i want i want you to sing because as from today i want you to take you know sometimes when we talk about our man of god or men of god generally we think we are talking about them because no i'm showing you Showing you why this man you see, I will follow blindly and foolishly. Give my money, give my life, give my family, give my children because of this principle. Be so, so, some people have told me, I've, I've seen, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to mention him because he's, he's on here. Some people have told me, please, waiting men of God, they give you job. Men, all the ministries that I have had opportunity to serve before virtues. There is one. I became a driver. Not driving Benz. You know now. I was driving school bus. It's bus. Electronics engineering degree. Inside school bus. They drive picking. Just because I want to I want connected with the covenant. We've not started. Genesis, what did I call? 21 verse 14 and 18. Please, sharply, sharp, 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 sharp. I want to end this service in the next 10 minutes because of only communion and other things. Genesis chapter 21 and The Lord is making a covenant with somebody here tonight. 
Somebody is making up his mind, you know, to follow our man of God, to follow the voice of the man of God, to follow him back to back. People of God, don't waver. Don't waver. The best you can do, okay, is here. People of God, this. look at this, look at this. People of God, can I have your attention, please? Please look up. I'm, 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 I'm ending this. The Bible says, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it to a guy. You know this story? You know this story, Abby? Agai was the maid and they gave back to Ishmael. Ishmael was not the covenant child. He was not the covenant child. And the Bible says, putting it on her shoulder uh, and the child and send them away. Because a guy began to buga, say, ah, you, Sarah, you know how you do it? You don't have room to carry baby. But me, I don't do my own. Look at what it says now. It says, and she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Bathsheba. Verse, verse 15, please verse 15 and the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the shoes because they finished the water and the child is about to die so she said instead of me to see the death of my child let the child be somewhere else go on and she went and sat her down against him at a good way off as it were a, a bow shot for it for she said let me not see the death of my child. Can you see? And she sat over against him and lift up her voice. So the woman cried, God, help me. My child is about to die. People of God, look at verse 17. And God had the voice of who? Who cried? Who cried? No, who cried? The mother cried. Okay, said the mother. The mother cried. But whose voice did the God, uh, the God hear? The voice of the the mother cried, God help me, help me. God did not hear the, the, the child did not cry. She the child did not cry. But God did not hear the voice of the child. God had the voice of the lad. Go on. And the angel of the God called to Haggai and out of heaven and said unto her, What ailed thee, Haggai? Fear not, for God has had the voice of the, of the, why would God hear the voice of the lad? Because the lad, came from the loins of a covenant man. The lad. The guy does, the guy does not have any roots. He does not have any connection with covenant. But because the seed, whether legitimate or not legitimate, that is why if an unbeliever sow seed, eh, because he has done a covenant principle, God will bless his work. That is why even even unbeliever support our man of God. A, allow me to use the word a pagan, so to say. Say man of God. Have you not heard of Muslims that will say God told me to give you this five million? Yes, sir. If that Muslim obey and partners with the servant of God, because even though he is a Muslim or is an unbeliever, because he has but now with a covenant man, God will bless him yes. as if nobody. Yes, that was what happened according to what we had to Dangote. He stood up for Archbishop in the plane. And Archbishop said, you business meeting. I'm going to preach. You can stand up for me. Ah, you will never be poor again. And that was it. He, he tapped into Kabali Shati Baliada Convenant Keeping God No one like you How far and Omega Jehovah There is no Convenant Keeping God there is no one like you. How far I know they are. Jehovah. There is no one. Two more times. One man on keeping God. One man on keeping God. There is no one. There is no one. There is no one like you. I am that I am. Oh, 
Alfa and Omega. Alpha and Omega. Jehovah. There is no one like you. I want you to make a declaration tonight.